Andrew told me in the year 2018 that Ritual Beast would be getting, you know, top eight at a regional, let alone a first place. I honestly would have probably laughed at you and said, unless you're a time traveler, you're full of shit. But, contrary to popular belief, uh, this deck actually ended up getting first place at the Portugal regional. So, what is up, guys? <sighs> Fat Blue Coal 40 here. Uh, we're going to be looking at the latest Ritual Beast uh, deck profile coming out of Portugal. Now, I'll be honest with you, um, ever since the limitation of Kanahawk and what Kanahawk had did for the soft loops of this deck, I think a lot of people, including myself, have kind of discounted um, this deck for being a relevant deck. And... I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I still don't think that this engine is particularly that good, but with the release of their new support card, it was it was kind of a matter of time until this deck got a little bit more for it. So, Ulti Kumamu, or Kumuno Falcus. It's just two Ritual Beast Monsters. Ritual Beast Monsters, this card points to gain 600 attack and defense. Banish one Ritual Beast card from a graveyard immediately after this effect resolves. You get the ability to get an additional normal summon. For a ritual beast monster in your hand and then you can only use uh, this effect of ritual beast ulti kuma uh, falcos once per turn and a quick effect you get to tag this thing out and then target two of your banished ritual beast uh so ritual beast tamer and a spiritual beast monster especially in, the, in defense mode this does have the ability to tag out this grants you the ability to terraform the two zones allowing you to further extend and it gives you the ability to get an additional normal summon and a power boost for your monsters, which honestly doesn't seem too incredibly terrible in the long run of things, especially for a deck that honestly I, I think wants its additional summons not as much as anything else, uh, considering <laughs> without a lot of the loops that this deck kind of had going for it, uh, just kind of little interesting things. So I don't know. It, in terms of skill level, uh, the deck still pretty much has everything it had going for it. The board control, uh, the ability to create really large monsters. Uh, it, it it all seems pretty good. So, let's dig into the deck profile, shall we? So, three copies of Ash Blossom in Joy of Spring. Triple Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Uh, triple Elder. One Lara. One Wen. One Zephyr Pelica. One Elio. Triple Kanahawk. One Petalfin. Triple Rimpangu, Triple Spiritual Beast Tamer Window, Triple Cosmic Cyclone, One Emergency Teleport, One Monster Reborn, Triple Desires, One Ritual Beast Bonds, One Soul Charge, Triple Ambush, Triple Steeds, and Two Torrential Tribute. And then the extra deck down here, Triple Alti Kimuno Falcos, One Deco Talker, One Borload, One Tornado Dragon, One Baguski, One Dweller, Two Petalfin, One Alti Gaia Pelio. One Kanahawk and triple Ulti Apelio. And then the side deck, two Effect Veiler, one Gamma Seal, two Kuma Mungus, the Sticky String Kaiju, one Dark Hole, one Dimensional Fissure, one Raigeki, two Twin Twister, triple Dimensional Barrier, one Imperial Order, and one Macro. Now the first thing I do want to point out, most of the Ritual Beast builds that we've kind of seen throughout time, um, I've seen these usually main decked, and I'm very intrigued to see why he wasn't opting uh, for having these two in the main deck. Um, I guess you're kind of trading um, these off for more hand traps. And granted, I, I'm not a... Hand traps' format feel a little bit clunkier, but I think when you're playing a deck like this, you kind of have to rely on the hand trap aspect of things. You know, take Ash Blossom and Ghost Ogre up here for an example. If you're setting up your board and you don't have anything or you have to get through the next turn, I mean, your best cards that you have are honestly these support cards right here and Torrential Tribute. I'm actually kind of surprised. I wonder if he would have played a third Torrential if he would have had room. Looking at the way that this deck was built, I think Torrential would have been great because <laughs> usually you can just kind of make an attempt to tag out and then put Torrential higher up on the chain depending on how you're building your chain. And then, you know, Steeds is just the best removal that ever, there ever was. And then Ambush, granting you the ability to revive to... Uh, it, it's so... so good. We can search half of this shit, too. Outside of that, um, you're, you're still... your typical standard boards with this starting. 
I feel like, in terms of, like, the design and stuff of this deck, Normal Summon Rimpengu Turn 1, without any sort of, like, follow-up, just seems kind of bad. But it's it's fine, because I guess they have Winda now. For those of you that don't know, if this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card, either without a card effect, you get special summon one Ritual Beast from your deck or extra deck, ignore many, ignoring those summoning conditions. This card actually has a lot of value, and it's 16-18. The defense actually kind of matters on her at the end of the day, which is kind of weird. Alright. First interesting thing down here. Um, one Gaia Ulti Apelio. I've seen some builds that are playing two of this for some reason. I don't, I'm, I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't question these things. Whether or not it's just for the, the dumping aspect or anything like that, but one copy of your su super boss monster. Uh, two copies of the ulti pedalfin. Uh, this also seems pretty standard-esque. And then, of course, ulti paleo should always be maxed out at all points in time, I feel like. Um, playing decode and borload, uh, this, these are very easily achievable. Um, my other question was, with how tight the extra deck looks, that's why there's definitely not another copy of these in here, with how tight the extra deck looks here, I'll be honest with you. Um, I wonder if there was any other Link monsters that he kind of wish he would have put. Something like, I don't know how reliable this deck is for wanting to make Saruja on turn one, to be honest with you. Um, but at the end of the day, it might have been something worth considering. Uh, Borlo is pretty much going to be your boss monster. And then, as we've kind of seen before with how this format is developing... If you're playing rank 4s, Dweller and Tornado Dragon are appearing to be your go-tos, and then Baguskas is kind of there for your offbeat rogue matchups. Honestly, this deck is kind of using the best mentality that we've seen from the format, the inclusion of hand traps for a rogue deck to try to get some sort of ground. Uh, rogue decks taking advantage of Torrential Tribute's destruction power. You know, this is something that we've seen from ABCs. Floatability is actually very key. In this format, this deck gets the ability to take care of that. You have access to one of the best cards in the deck. You have access to the basic disruption rank of fours. And to top things off, you know, you also have access to Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmo for a disruption. And I mean, you literally, you do everything that most of the other decks do. Granted, for a little bit lower of a power level and structure uh, for the way that things are working out. So you still have all of the draw power in the world for the rest of the format. So it's very understandable how this deck was able to do it. As long as, you know, you have all the essential pieces in the format to get to where you need to be, then you can do it very easily. All right, let's shovel up some hands here. Shovel this up five times. All right, right. let's see here. So we have Elder, which grants us our additional normal summon. And we're on Ulti Paleo, so we can make whichever guy that we need to make. We're also sitting on Steeds as well for uh, Disruption, which, I mean, honestly, Cosmic... This this hand follows my general principality of the format. We have Destruction, Disruption, Disruption. You know, being able to answer one and two. I mean, depending on if the opponent's got, like, some sort of Pendulum Summon or anything, you can tag out, set up, and just pop two, you know. I, I see no no real issue here. Uh, outside of that, I mean, the hand was pretty standard. What you got? You got kind of Hawk, Petal Fin, and Win. All right. Well, uh, you're gonna have to desires and hope for something. Your desires get you an Elder and uh, kind of Hawk, so you'll be able to extend into whichever ritual beast plays that you need to make. Uh, ooh, we got double disruption here. Oh man. Honestly, I would probably go about this. If I'm going second, set, set, and then you have disruption. Um, excuse me, if you're going first, set, set, disruption. If you're going second, you get access to steeds. But then you gotta have the uphill battle. The, the good part is you can at least ram this and start beaming out the monsters that you need um, to set up your initial plays, which is fine with. Uh, let's see here. Well, we got Winda and Elder, and we got the same three disruption cards again. It seems like if, if you have some large number of disruption, you can pop out a very large boss monster. You should have some success this format. And I think this deck really kind of proves that theory. But what do you guys think about Ritual Beast getting first place in Portugal? What do you think about the list? Any comments? Please 
leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think about this spiciness and i do want to thank ready for duel um, from facebook for getting this information up so we could cover it so all right guys hope you have a good rest of your day later the ride never ends guys make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel make sure you guys check out van cole 40 for my card fight vanguard channel and join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.